Welcome to the accounting class by ARD and the topic of the day is partnership accounts. Now my dear students today we will be doing partnership accounts. Uh, we will be solving a full length question which contains all of the items that are being tested in the CAIE examinations. First of all we will be making income statement then after income statement there is another thing known as appropriation account then we have something known as current accounts and in the last but not the least is statement of financial position now let me read a question this is a CAIE past paper question I guess it's 2014 question I'm reading the question for you Chan and Fong are in partnership sharing profit and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 1 2 is to 1 means out of the 3 ratios 2 plus 1 equals 3 out of the 3 ratios Chan will get 2 ratios 2 out of 3 this means 2 upon 3 that is 67 percent or precisely 66.67 percent and for Fong it is 1 upon 3 that is one third 33.3 percent interest is allowed on capital at the rate of 5 percent per annum we'll be discussing it afterwards and interest is charged on drawings at the rate of 5 percent per annum Fong receives a salary of 10,000 per annum Fong is also being paid a salary of 10,000 now the following balance is extracted from the books on 30th April now before going through this if you haven't studied partnership before I'll recommend that you must go through my earlier lecture for partnership accounts that are the conceptual lecture the con partnership accounts concepts uh, if you have gone through the concepts already let us go through this question now there are some items this is a list of balances given one is revenue revenue also known as sales then we have an inventory at first May uh, inventory at first May is opening inventory so now see the inventory that is given in this list or the trial balance this is always opening inventory and the inventory that is given in the notes that is additional information this is the closing inventory now the three hints to find out whether the inventory is opening or whether it is closing first is if the inventory is included in the list of balances it is an opening inventory and if the inventory is mentioned at the bottom of the question in a form of additional information it is closing inventory then if the inventory date is written as first this is opening inventory and if the inventory is mentioned as 30th this is closing inventory again if the date is 2014 this is closing and uh, if it is 2013 that is opening the earlier year is opening inventory and the later year is closing inventory now there are three hints one is first or 30th one is 2013 or 14 or maybe 18 or 19 and then the third is if the inventory is in the list it is opening and in the notes if it is closing then we have purchases then we have return from customers also known as return inward or sale return then we have return to suppliers also known as return outward or purchase return then we have a land and building at cost that we have, we have bought this land and building for 250,000 then we have motor vehicles fiction fitting again these are the costs that the original amount paid for them then we have provision for depreciation provision for depreciation means total depreciation till date for motor vehicles and fixtures as you can see there is no provision for depreciation given for land and building so therefore uh, we can conclude that uh, land and building does not depreciates in this question now basically land never depreciates but building sometimes uh, building always depreciates but in this question there is no depreciation given for building and we can confirm this uh, with the notes as well then we have office expenses motor vehicle expense these are all expenses to run the business uh, selling expenses wages and salaries heat and light also known as operating expenses then we have a loan interest loan interest has already been paid for 9000 then we have capital accounts then we have current accounts we'll discuss this afterward capital and current account then we have drawings you are also already aware what does drawing means means the owners or uh, partners have taken out money from the business for their own use or personal use then we have an eight percent loan we have taken out a bank loan maybe of 200,000 we need to pay an interest of 8% on this amount 200,000 then we have trade receivables also known as debtors then a provision for doubtful debts uh, then we have trade payables previously known as creditors bank balance is also there and the bank balance is written as debit means uh, this is a bank balance if it's written credit this means it is a bank overdraft then let's move forward there is some additional information uh, 
uh, let us uh, go through this one by one one is closing inventory one is motor vehicle expenses are to be apportioned one quarter to collecting goods for resale and three quarter for delivery of goods to customers now the motor vehicle expenses are already given in the list of balances we need to apportion means meaning to divide this one quarter means one upon four to collecting goods for resale uh, and three quarter that is three upon four seventy five percent delivery of goods to customer now you may be aware that the carriage cost or transportation cost that is uh, relating to purchase collecting goods for purchase uh, collecting goods for resale means we are purchasing or uh, goods are coming into the business then this form of transport is known as carriage inwards and uh, the one that is related to customers or the delivery is known as carriage outwards now what do we do we need to add carriage in words in cost of sales and we need to include carriage outward in the expenses for the business now we need to divide the motor vehicle expenses into one quarter and three quarter then at the end of the year we have heat and light accrued and office expenses are prepaid uh, now uh, accrued means owing or outstanding this means we have incurred the expense we have, but we have not yet paid the expenses uh, now what do we need to do we need to add accrued expenses in the expense at the end of the year and we need to subtract that is deduct prepaid expenses we are deducting this because this belongs to the next year and we are adding this that be belongs to this year but have not yet been paid so this is the liability for the business and these are current assets half of Fong's salary have been paid to him uh, we'll be discussing this afterward fiction fitting costing 2000 have been purchased on check and not been recorded in the book if you have bought some fixtures that we have not recorded it yet we need to make an entry fiction fittings debit and bank account would be created so fiction fitting will be increased and the bank account would be reduced now there are depreciation uh, methods are given percentages now for depreciation for motor vehicle we need to charge 25% reducing balance also known as diminishing balance and on the fixture we need to charge 10% straight line i hope you have gone through all these depreciation lectures as well uh, now we have trade receivables contain a debt of 7500 which is considered irrecoverable irrecoverable means bad debt we need to deduct this from the trade receivables and after deducting bad debt from the trade receivable we need to calculate a 6% for doubtful debt then we need to see whether the doubtful debts are increasing during the year or decreasing during the year now let us move to the first requirement first requirement is prepare income statement and appropriation account for the year ended now first First of all, we will be preparing income statement. Income statement, my dear students, would be the same as we used to make as income statement for a sole trader. Now there is exactly there is there are exactly no differences, uh, and the, it is exactly the same whether we make an income statement for a sole trader or a partnership. And then after we have done making the income statement, then we'll be moving forward to the newer part for uh, appropriation the account that is only made in the partnership accounts and not in the sole trader account. Now let us solve the question. Now before moving forward, uh, the the link to this question is available in the PDF file in the video description. Uh, you can also print out this before moving forward uh, or you can save it on another device and you, you must keep in front of you so you may see it, visit it time to time. Now I am starting making the income statement first. As you may be aware income statement is always made in two columns. We'll be writing the heading income statement and appropriation account. As you have already seen, the heading is already given in the uh, examination worksheet. If the heading is already given, you need not to uh, put the heading again. So first of all, I'm making the format for an income statement, which is exactly the same as for a sole trader income statement. First of all, there comes revenue or sales. Then we'll be deducting return inwards. Then uh, after leaving a line, then we'll be moving to cost of sales, opening inventory, add purchases, less return outward. In the sales, we'll be deducting return inward and from the purchases, we'll be deducting return outward. Then we have a carriage inwards, that is transportation cost, then closing inventory. Now, if we add and subtract all these items, we'll be getting a cost of sale figure. If we deduct a net sale from cost of sales, uh, if we did a cost of sale from net sales, we'll be getting gross profit. Then we have add other income. Other income contains uh, income from uh, other transactions such as discount received, rent received, or commission received, or receivable maybe. Then we have expenses. Then finally, we'll be calculating profit for the year. Now, till profit for the year, nothing is different as from a sole trader. Then after there are some items containing appropriation account 
and now we'll be discussing these items afterwards first of all let us make an income statement for a partnership I'm not discussing these items right now we'll be discussing these afterwards now first of all you may see from the question we have a revenue figure that is sales revenue rate uh, 480 500 then return inwards is given with the name of return from customers we'll be deducting this in order to get net sales figure then we have an opening inventory in the list there is always opening inventory purchase is already given the question 209000 return outward is also given purchase return return to suppliers then we have a carriage inwards see in the carriage it is mentioned in the note note number 2 that motor vehicle expenses are to be apportioned means divided one quarter to collecting goods for resale now what we'll be doing we'll be dividing one upon four uh, to the motor vehicle expenses the total motor vehicle expenses are given in the trial balance 13,600 we'll be cal calculating one quarter and including it in the carriage inward and the remaining three quarters will be including it in carriage outward that is expenses then the closing inventory figures already given in note one now adding all these positive values blue values and subtracting the negative values will be getting cost of sales now after deducting net sales from cost of sale will be getting gross profit this is not a final profit for the business then there are two adjustments that need to be made one is other income now there is no other income in this question but uh, it is mentioned in some of the question then we have expenses in the expenses there is increase in provision now how come we know there is an increase in provision we need to calculate it uh, as increase or decrease first of all you may see in the question there is a figure given for trade receivables that is 55,000 after out of the trade receivable figure we need to deduct the bad debt which is given in note number 7 we'll be deducting bad debt because bad debt is included in this figure after deducting bad debt the total receivable need to be multiplied with the percentage that is given for doubtful debt that is six percent now the total provision value uh, for this year is 2850 if the total provision is required 2850 we need to compare it with the provision that is given uh, at the start of the year that in is in the list of the balances as you may be seen the list of balances the already provision of 2100 is given now the a provision was previously 2100 we need to increase it to 2850 if we need to calculate the difference if we need to uh, see the difference between the two uh, it is 750 now what happened the provision was previously 2100 and now we need to increase it to 2850 so there is an increase of 750 if the provision for doubtful debt is increasing during the year this is an expense for the business and if the provision is decreasing during the year this is an income for the business then we have a bad debt, bad debt or irrecoverable debt, uh, also known as irrecoverable debt. It is always charged an in income statement than an expense. No matter if the, uh, if the question says that bad debt was written off during the year or it says bad debt uh, to be written off. Bad debt is always deducted. Now we have a carriage outward. We have already discussed that one four of the uh, transportation cost, motor vehicle expense related to the carriage inward and the three four relate to carriage outward so we need to multiply 3 4 to this figure 13600 or alternatively we can also do this that out of the total 13600 we need to deduct this carriage inward in order to get this carriage outward then we have depreciation as you can see clearly there is no difference right now whether we are studying sole trader accounts or partnership accounts because the difference part will be coming later in this video then we have a depreciation for motor vehicles already given in the question uh, in note 6 that it is 25% reducing balance method now as you may be aware in reducing balance we need to calculate depreciation based on net book value so how we need to calculate net book value we need to deduct provision for depreciation from the cost of motor vehicles now the cost of motor vehicles is already given in the question as 45,000 motor vehicles cost is given in the question we needed to deduct provision for depreciation for motor vehicles that is 25 in order to get the net book value 20,000 we need to multiply 25% to the 20,000 figure we need to get the depreciation 5,000 
then in the fixture and fitting question uh, in note 6 it is given 10% straight line now straight line is directly applied to cost figure we need to multiply cost with the 10,000 but there is an also an adjustment in the question and adjustment given note number 5 we have bought a fixture worth 2000 but we have forgot to record this transaction now what we need to do we need to add the fixtures account and we need to subtract from the bank account we need to add 2000 then we need to multiply directly with 10 percent now why i have uh, deducted provision for depreciation when calculating depreciation for motor vehicles but have not deducted depreciation when calculating depreciation for fixtures because we are using reducing balance in motor vehicles and we using straight line in uh, fixtures this is the difference because why we are not subtracting provision for depreciation one more thing uh, i need to remind here uh, is that if the scrap value also known as residual value is given in the question uh, in a straight line so in, in in a straight line scrap value or residual value is always directed if the scrap value would have been given in this question i will be directed the, from this 28000 and after i will be multiplying 10% then we have office expenses already given in the question and the trial balance is given 36500 and as you can see note number 3 office expenses were prepaid we need to deduct this uh, prepaid means we have already paid 4000 in advance for the upcoming year that is next year we need to deduct this we do not need to charge it if this year we will be charging it in next year so the 4000 that we have deducted from here will be coming in a balance sheet uh, as current asset the name of other receivables now we have some other expenses that is selling expenses already given wages and salary now there is an adjustment in the wages and salary if you may see in the trial balance we have paid wages and salary 80,000 and now let's discuss note number 4 in note number 4 the question mentions half of the firm's salary have been paid to him and posted to wages and salary account uh, now see the Fong, uh, F Mr. Fong is a partner for the business and if we are paying salary to Fong, uh, this is not an expense for the business, this salary will be included uh, in a drawing, uh, yes in the drawings and in the appropriation account but not in the income statement. In the income statement salaries are only included uh, which relate to the employees of the business. If you are paying salary to the owner or partner of the business we will be uh, writing it in appropriation account section. So half of the 10,000 salary becomes 5,000. We have already paid in 5,000. We need to deduct this from the wages and salary account and we will be writing it in drawing account and this appropriation account then we have light and heat is also an expense and in note number three is already mentioned that heat and light are accrued accrued may the means we have used the heating and lightning but we have not yet paid 750 so we are about to pay this in the near future so this is the liability we'll be adding it here because we have used this expense but we have not paid we'll also be including it in current liability then we have a loan interest as you may be aware there is a loan in the business and the loan is total loan is 200,000 if we apply 8% to 200,000 this becomes total 16,000 now out of the 16,000 loan interest we have already paid some of the interest which is mentioned in the question 9,000 has already been paid now if I deduct a 9,000 from the total amount 16,000 the remaining amount becomes 7,000 so 7,000 is basically the accrued part so why I am mentioning Mentioning it here, uh, the examiner at CAIE uh, requires that we need to show the adjustment of accrued and prepaid in front of every expense item. Now, out of the from where did the, this sixteen thousand came? Uh, if we multiply eight percent to the total loan that is two hundred thousand, the total interest that needs to be paid this year is sixteen thousand. And out of the sixteen thousand nine have or nine thousand already been paid mentioned in the question with the name of bank loan interest paid. So if we deduct nine thousand from the total 16,000 now this figure uh, can arrive we can arrive to this figure that is 7,000 this is accrued this uh, we have used this uh, loan interest but we have not yet paid so we also need to include it in the expense and uh, after that uh, if we, when we will be making balance sheet we also need to include this in a current liability now uh, as you may be aware I have uh, calculated all the expenses now out of this gross profit I need to deduct all of the expenses in order to arrive the figure for profit for the year now this part is I am sure this must be clear uh, this part we have not yet discussed any of the partnership now we are going to discuss the partnership part this was the simple income statement now the question mentions we need to calculate income statement and appropriation account 
appropriation account basically means whatever money that the business has earned during the year we need to appropriate it or divide it amongst the partners now there are basically three items in an appropriation account first of all we have interest on drawings uh, you, as you may be aware what does drawing means uh, if you have a partnership and everybody keeps drawing out money from the business for personal use do you think any of the capital will remain in the business no the capital will start disappearing and all of the capital will be suddenly vanish from the business if there is no capital the business won't be able to survive in the future so therefore we need to restrict our partners so as to keep their drawing to a minimum level now how could we do that we need to introduce some sort of penalty in the form of interest on drawing this means we are saying to uh, partners are discussing that whoever will draw out the money out of the business we need to pay uh, will need to pay interest because of that uh, in interest as a penalty uh, the partners will be discouraged to do more and more drawing okay now in this question interest on drawing rate is already given in the first paragraph as you may be see interest is charged on the drawing at the rate of 5% per annum now in the question you can clearly see in the list of balance there is a drawing given under the drawing heading chan has drawn 6000 and we need to multiply 5% to the chan drawing that is 300 interest need to be charged to chan and the fong has drawn out 10000 we need to charge again 5% that is 500 now this interest on drawing whether business is paying the partners or business is receiving from the partners business is receiving from the partner now because this is a profit for the business because business is charging partners interest on the amount that they have drawn out of the business so this is the profit for the business we need to add it in the profit figure now there is an interest of capital similarly uh, if we take loan from the uh, bank we need to pay loan to interest to the bank uh, now in the same manner we need to pay interest to the partners now why we are paying interest to the partners the reason for that is if you may see in this question chan has invested 60000 in the business and fong has invested 40000 so now chan may be worried because i have invested more whether i would be getting a larger share of the business or he may be interested to uh, divest 20000 from the business so as to make his capital equal to fong and the remaining 20000 he will be interested to invest somewhere maybe he want to keep it in the bank so that he can earn some interest and for the same reason uh, because we do not discriminate the partners what will be doing will be giving interest to the partners one who have invested more money into the business will be getting more interest and one who has in invested less amount into the business will be getting less less interest income now interest on capital is already given uh, at the top of the question again this is also 5% per annum so chang will be getting 5% interest on the 60000 investment and fong will be getting 5% on the 40000 investment now this interest we need to pay to the partners therefore it is uh, some sort of expense but we are not included it into the income statement part because this relates to the partners the transaction relating to the partners will be coming in the appropriation account and the transaction relating to the uh, employees or maybe outsiders will be coming in expense now there is a salary uh, in the first paragraph as you may be see fong is also entitled to a salary of 10000 so we need to pay salary to the fong uh, whether we have paid him or not this the total amount of salary will be included in the appropriation account uh, if the salary relates to employee will be charging salary in the income statement as an expense and if the salary relates to the partner we need to uh, deduct it from in the appropriation account now the total amount of profit that the business has earned 71200 now 800 is received from partners now the total profit is 72000 and out of this 72 will be deducting this expenses 15000 in order to get the residual profit and now the residue means something that remains so the remaining profit again needs to be distributed among partners there are two partners chang and fong and the partnership profit and loss ratio is given that is 2 is to 1 if it's the profit and loss ratio is not given in the question well basically it's given in the question uh, what if the examiner does not give the profit and loss ratio that there can be two things uh, maybe the examiner wants you to divide profit and loss in the ratio of capital but again the examiner will mention this that profit and loss will be distributed in proportion to the capital invested so if this is the case then the capital uh, as you may be see there is 60 40 capital so the profit will also be divided in the proportion of 60% and 40% 
and if the examiner does not mention every anything means the examiner want you to divide the profit and loss equally so then we need to multiply in this case there is a two third and one third multiply 56,000 to two third in order to get this residual profit figure now again the total profit or loss need to be appropriated between the partners and there should not remain any item since now this the residual profit is zero so student this was the income statement and appropriation part now i'm moving forward to the current account part now what is the current account as you may be aware from your earlier studies of sole trader final accounts that uh, what increases and what decreases our capital whenever we are earning profits or if there is a gain in the business the capital of the business increases and whenever there are expenses or losses of the business the capital decreases whenever uh, there is a drawing in the business again the capital decreases now due to these transactions uh, whether it is profit loss income expense and drawing our capital fluctuates now if we are a sole trader uh, there is no worry for us because this is our capital and we do not need to give uh, account of this to anyone else if our capital uh, increases or decreases it doesn't matter for us but if we are partners we need to be aware of that how much money uh, each partner has invested in the business so, so the items that increases or decreases our capital are need to be kept in a separate account known as current account because of which we do not want our capital account to fluctuate each time whether there is a profit loss or drawing maybe so we need to make a separate account uh, known as current account and all of the items that uh, fluctuates our capital are included in current account rather than in uh, a capital account now we'll be starting with a balance brought down that is balance bd now in a current account balance bd can come on a credit side normally and abnormally it can also come on the debit side as you may be aware current account is part of the capital account so if the capital account the nature of capital is credit the nature of current account will basically should also be credit but there may be a situation that the partner has drawn more money out of the business more than his amount of share in the business or more than uh, than his profit share then the current account will become a debit that is abnormal balance so it will be will be writing debit on the, uh, on a debit side now anything that we are uh, we want to pay to the partner anything that the partner is earning from the business will be credited to his current account because we need to increase our liability base basically so what partner will be getting will be uh, paying partner interest on capital uh, we are about to pay him salary and we need to give him share of profit now you may be aware that profit increases the capital so therefore current account also need to be increased that is credited and what is decreasing our capital a uh, drawing always decreases our capital so drawing is always debited in a current account then we have interest on drawing because of interest on drawing we are paying uh, charging interest from partners the interest on drawing will be coming on the debit side now the share of loss you may be aware that loss always decreases the capital so therefore it is coming on the debit side now one more thing that can be, uh, probably uh, be appearing in a current account that is interest on loan if we have taken a uh, uh, loan from a partner or if the partner has take given loan to his own business so the interest on the loan will be included in an income statement i repeat interest on loan from a partner will be included in an income statement and not in an appropriation account why because we are treating him as an outsider because he is considering he or she is considering us as an outsider because if if he or she would have considered uh, uh, the business as his own he would have invested capital rather than giving loan to the business so the loan interest is always charged as an expense in an income statement but uh, if we have not yet paid him loan interest we we not need to uh, show him as a current liability or other payable accrued expense will be charging loan interest here will be crediting him sorry will be crediting uh, loan interest in the current account so uh, in this item uh, we will always writing credit side interest on loan 
Now we have opening balances already given in the question. As you may see in the list of balances, current account balances of Fong and Cheng are given because both of the current account are on credit side. The, these are both normal balance. If any of the current account has written debit in front of them, uh, we'll be writing it on the debit side. Then we have an interest on capital. Interest on capital is already given in the question. We have already calculated all of these items in this appropriation account. This is interest on capital. This is interest on drawing. Now this is salary and this is residual profit. We have already calculated all these items. We just need to input it here. Then we have salary. Now the salary, this is the total amount of salary that need to be paid to Fong. No matter whether we have paid him the salary or not. This is the total amount of salary that is coming here. Now if the salary has already been paid to Fong, what we need to do? We need to include this salary in drawing as well. Now see in the question, the drawing of Fong is basically 10,000. Now we are why we are uh, writing here 15,000? Be because we have already paid him half of the salary that we owe him uh, the total salary for Fong is 10,000 and half of that amount is 5,000 so what we need to do if the salary have already been paid to a partner this will be added to his drawing account or uh, alternatively we can also do this that we'll be writing 10,000 here and we need to include another line item with the name of uh, salary drawing salary drawing can also be shown as a separate line item or alternatively salary drawing can also be added to his drawing so if the uh, if the question does not mentions that we have paid any of the salary to the partner then the salary drawing would not appear on the debit side uh, rather only the credit side will be here uh, as a only the partner uh, partner's uh, current account will be credited with the salary that we need to pay to him then the interest on drawing we have already mentioned here there is no share of loss we need to add this up again the debit side is greater the greater side comes on both of the sides and the shorter side is always balance carry it down balance CD now if this balance CD becomes balance brought down in the next accounting period then again the same procedure need to be repeated with the form and uh, now as you may be seeing uh, the balance brought down for both of the partners is balance brought down credit balance this is the normal balance and if there is an abnormal balance this means it will come on the debit side that is balance BD maybe there one of the partner has a normal balance and another one has an abnormal balance that is debit balance lastly we need to make a statement of financial position first of all we need to put the heading if it's already not given in the examination question as you may be aware balance sheet always made in three columns why because there is a provision for depreciation and provision for doubtful debt in the question first of all we'll be starting with assets then there are the non-current assets three column would be there cost accumulated depreciation and net book value now as far as statement of financial position of a partnership is concerned statement of financial position is basically the same uh, or at least the assets and liabilities side is the same only the capital side is different from that of sole traders we need to start with uh, non-current assets uh, if you maybe see uh, if you may see in the question there is a land and building again the cost of land and building will be written in the first column there is no provision for depreciation given in land and building so we'll be uh, not writing anything here then we'll be deducting this because there is no provision for depreciation so cost and net book values are the same then we have a motor vehicles as you may be aware motor vehicles cost is already given 45,000 now uh, if you may see the question the provision for depreciation is already given as 25,000 for uh, previous years so 25,000 is already given in the question now in this question as you may see we have already charged further depreciation of 5,000 now if I add 5,000 to the 25,000 already given in the question this becomes the total depreciation that is 30,000 total depreciation becomes 30,000 now if I deduct accumulated depreciation from the cost figure in order to get the net book value then we have a fixture in fitting there was an adjustment in fixture and fitting. The cost of the fixture and fitting given in the question was 28,000. And there was an adjustment in note number 5. We have already bought another fixture which, uh, which we forgot to record of 2000. We need to add this 20 plus 2 that is 30. Now the provision for depreciation is already given in fixture and fitting that is 12,000. Now previously we have 12,000 provision for depreciation and now we have 3000 further depreciation in this year. 12 plus 3 total becomes 15,000. 
So if I deduct 15,000 from the this value, now the half value remains that is 15,000. Now uh, we have no use for cost and accumulated depreciation figure. Now to need to put double line. Now the net book value figure, this is important for us. We need to move it further. That is 280,000. After non-current assets, we have current assets. First of all, we need to write inventory. Inventory is always closing inventory. Now why I am putting it in the second column? Because I need to add these and uh, arrive at the total figure in the third column. Now from second to third, we can move easily. So after inventory, there's a trade receivable. Trade receivable is given in the question uh, 55,000. But out of that 55,000, 7,500 has already been uh, bad debt. So we need to deduct bad debt before uh, entering trade receivables in the balance sheet. Now I am putting it in the first column because I need to deduct one more item from this that is provision for doubtful debts. Now provision for doubtful debt figure need to be deducted from this. That is 2850. So this is the net figure. Uh, how, where did we get this 2850? We need to multiply 47500 with the 6%. Or alternatively what we can do uh, in the question uh, provision for doubtful debt is already given as 2100 so 2100 figure for was for the last year and now in this figure in this year we have increased the provision by 750 now 2100 plus 750 becomes the total as 2850 now the easy uh, easier method is that we just need to apply a uh, six percent on this figure now we have other receivables if you can see in the adjustments addition information there is the prepaid expense prepaid expenses are always included in other receivables and alternatively there can be uh, accrued income as well accrued income figure will also be coming in other receivable now we have a bank balance uh, in the question already bank balance is given 34500 there was an adjustment we have purchased a fixture but we have forgot to record this we need to direct the bank with the fixture that we have purchased now if I add all the current assets, the total is this. Now if I add non-current assets, this is a non-current asset. With this current assets, I may get the total asset value. Now as you may be aware of the accounting equation, accounting equation is assets is equal to capital plus liability. So there is also a minus version of the accounting equation, assets minus liability is equal to capital. But in a statement of financial position, in a newer format, we use the plus uh, version that is assets is equal to capital capital plus liability capital liability values now in a sole trader and in a manufacturing how does this capital section is prepared in a sole trader or a manufacturing question capital is calculated as opening capital add profit for the year less drawings becomes closing capital now in a partnership there is a slight difference we need to write only two items that is capital accounts and current account now in this question there are two partners one is Chan and one is Fong so the capital of Chan and Fong invested is 60 and 40 respectively now the total capital of both of these two partners is 100,000 uh, now why we are not adding interest and pro profit and deducting drawing because interest drawing profit we have already adjusted all these values in the current account we just need to write these values for current account that is closing values not the opening values now the closing values for current account we have already calculated balance cds and balance bds 36200 and 19500 now there is one more thing that we need to uh, remember here if any of now we are adding all of these in order to get this total capital now if any of the current account is uh, on debit side that is abnormal balance what we need to do we need to deduct from here so if this uh, 36 200 was on the debit side what we need to do we need to write this as a negative value here in the current account and we'll be deducting from this value in order to get this value this is also negative then so what we need to do we need to deduct this value uh, from the uh, normal capital value in order to get get this positive figure now what i'm saying these are all of the items these are all items are credit in nature because capital is also credit current account is also on credit so if any of the current accounts is on debit we need to deduct that abnormal item and in order to get this total figure credit because the total capital is always credited so the capital account is always greater and current account is always the lesser value so what we need to do if there is an abnormal item we need to show in as a minus figure
then we have a non current liability in non current liability there is no difference in a non current liability or current liability as that from a sole trader we have an 8% loan 2016 uh, this is important we need to write an 8% of 2016 if we do not write this 8% of 16 in the examination we may lose one mark then we have a current liability figure current liability includes trade payable already given the question then we have other payables other payables include accrued expense or maybe prepaid income so this is rare prepaid income accrued expenses in this question is heat and light and one also uh, there that is loan interest so we have already calculated the total amount of loan interest 200000 multiplied by 8% becomes 16000 and out of this 16000 9000 already been paid is it given the question interest paid so this is the current liability figure so if we add uh, as if we add capital and liabilities this side this is always coincides with the total asset side because the total assets always uh, uh, equates with total capital and liabilities so i hope my dear students you were able to understand partnership accounts uh, if you benefit from this video kindly do share your precious comments and do share my channel with other of your classmates if you if you haven't subscribe my channel now is the right time to do it thank you